you know, I've known, I've known Dan Barber for years, and he's obviously a fantastic speaker, and uh, thought, well, he's only going to show a video, and I'm going to dodge that bullet of being after Dan, and of course, <laughs> he comes up with all that, and I got a slideshow. But uh, <laughs> anyway, um, these, are, these are just some images. Um, they're on a loop. Uh, that are going to hopefully provide a uh, pleasant distraction for whatever I'm not saying. Um, <laughs> actually, these are, these are some images of, of my staff and myself working, uh, working with eggs um, and some of the dishes that we've created at the restaurant over the years uh, as a result of our, our ongoing dialogue with eggs. Um, and I will, I will get back to eggs in a minute. I just want to talk a bit about, about some other things. And uh, actually, it'll be a little bit of overlap with Kenji, but hopefully not, not too much. I'm going I'm to let you guys in on a, on a secret that probably, I, I see some chefs in the audience, probably would rather I not reveal. But um, I, I, we chefs um, who are in charge of, well, here it is. How do you eat? OK, here's the idea. How do you eat? And so for me, the notion of how you eat is intrinsically linked to how you cook. I can't separate the two, really, because that's what I do. I'm a cook. Uh, and the secret is, is that we really have no idea what we're doing. We don't know how to cook. And we haven't known how to cook for a really, really long time. And we've been very successful at fooling you guys. And I want to thank you for that, for not <laughs> noticing. Um, but. Again, I want to go backwards a little bit and, 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 talk, about, and talk about that, talk about the, what we don't know. Um, I, I, I opened up WD-50 um, with, with one main, well, with a couple of goals. One goal was to, uh, oh, here. As a cook, I thought I'd have a timer to remind me. <laughs> My time's up, so before I forget. Um, I had, I had a couple of goals. I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to start to find my own voice, develop my, myself as a cook, um, own my own restaurant. But really, at, at, the, at the core of it, what I wanted to do was I wanted to, to create a place where I could continue my education, my education as a cook. I wanted to create a place where I could continue learning, where my staff could continue learning, and where if, if you guys, the diners, were interested, you could continue learning about food. I wanted to create a place because I had gone to school. Very happily, I went to the French Culinary Institute in New York City. I had a great education. I learned a lot. I learned the, the vocab. I was given the vocabulary necessary to go out uh, and get a very sort of entry-level job. I was fortunate enough to work for some, some great chefs and learn lots of things for many years, head down, sort of chipping away, learning how to cook how to roast a chicken, how to poach an egg, how to fillet a fish, how to torne a vegetable, all these things. I learned all these things and uh, very happily. I kept my head down and just work, 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 learn as much as I can. And I got to a point where I was finally allowed to ask a few questions. Kitchens are not terribly forgiving when it comes to questions. But I got to a point where I was allowed to ask questions. OK, chef, I see that we're, we're doing this, this way, we're cooking the chicken this way, and we're sauteing the fish this way, and we're poaching the egg that way. Well, how come? And again, as, as Kenji mentioned earlier, the answers are kind of surprising. Well, it's, the kitchens are full of, of dogma and superstition and folklore, and well, we're doing it that way because that's the way we've always done it, or because when we do it that way, it works. Or my favorite answer, because I said so. Uh, well, okay, yes, chef, we chef, that's all well and good, but I haven't learned anything, really. I can do this thing right 99 times, and on the 100th time, it didn't work, but I could have sworn I did everything right, but I, I don't know what happened. I don't know why it didn't work. So I had this, this body of knowledge. I had how to cook, but I didn't, know, have, I didn't have why. I didn't know why I was doing things, and I wanted to know why. Why are we doing it this way? What are the variables? What's happening? Are there other ways to do it? Or why are we getting the results that we're getting? I wanted to know why. I felt like I had a very good understanding, but I had a limited understanding. And I wanted to improve upon it. I wanted more answers to the questions that I had. And so 
When I opened up my own restaurant, I decided that, that would be one of the main focuses, would be to seek out answers to questions about cooking, about food, what's happening to food as it cooks, as it goes through this wonderful transformation. Uh, and so I realized that there was information out there. I was just going to have to look in some other places, that there were people out there that had answers, that there were people who were also curious about food, that there were people out there that knew about food, uh, that, that I had to go out to other disciplines. And so I started to think, well, where, where can I look? And well, what is cooking? Cooking is some biology, certainly some physics, and a lot of chemistry. So let's contact some of those people. Let's reach out to scientists that have an understanding of food chemistry, food science. And, and, I, was able, and, I, and I came across Harold McGee's book, and I was fortunate enough to get to meet him and become a friend of his, and Chris Young and some other scientists, and realized that in the industrial world, in the commercial food processing, there's some very, there's, there's, there's a lot of bad things, and we talked about some of that earlier today, but there's also a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of information about what happens to food as it's prepared. So I began to access that information and, and try to develop relationships, meet, meet other chefs, meet other people that were, that were interested, and begin to, to, ama to, to mass this body of information to try to understand what was going on. Because really, I'm a good cook, believe me. But I don't always know why I'm a good cook. And I needed to know why, because I, I felt a responsibility to myself, but also a responsibility to everybody else, that we should know what we're doing. You, don't, so you, you wouldn't take my picture without considering the light, the shutter speed, all these factors. And then you can decide how to take a good picture. And somebody wouldn't, an architect wouldn't design this space without taking into consideration all sorts of information so that they could build it well and properly. And yet, for thousands of years, we've been cooking just because that's the way we've been doing it. And it really started to, to sort of bother me that I didn't know as much as I thought I did. And so I wanted to create a place where we could learn more about that and develop these relationships. And I can say seven years later, I feel very fortunate that we are beginning to learn more as cooks. And that we're beginning to be able to have answers for you guys about what we do and how we do it and how to do it better. We take that, and on top of that, we can take, and you can see in some of these photos, we can take that knowledge, that information, and then we can apply. It's constantly coming in. It's a never-ending cycle of, of education about cooking, which is great. But as the information comes in, we can keep applying ourselves to it, and you can see some really interesting dishes that we've been able to make as we've taken our knowledge, this growing body of knowledge, applied our creativity to it, We've come up with some really interesting things and some really interesting results. And that leads us back to the egg. And, and why the egg? Well, for a couple of reasons. The egg is my favorite food. I like eating eggs more than I like eating anything else. But the egg also, to me, is it's one of the ingredients that's in virtually every kitchen. Everybody around the world, in some way, shape, or form, in a kitchen, relies on an egg, for the most part. Of course, there are exceptions. But you know, the egg can rectify oil and water. The egg makes your pasta flexible. It makes your ice cream creamy. It, it clarifies your soups. It makes your souffle stable. It thickens your sauces. It does all these amazing, beautiful things. But why? How? I had, and I had no idea. And so am I making my sauce as well as I could, or am I clarifying my broth as well as I could? And the answer is no, I, I wasn't. I wasn't doing it in an informed way, and I was wasting time and wasting energy and wasting money. And so, again, we've begun to understand. And it turns out that an egg is not really that complicated, that an egg is it's a shell, it's a white, it's a yolk, and it's, it's got some water in there, too. And, but it's fairly straightforward in a way. I mean, the chicken is far more complicated. There's many more components to the chicken than the egg, there's more variables. There's, in my mind, at least, a chicken is a, a much more of a complicated thing when it comes to cooking. But the egg was universal and, and really fascinating. So again, we've, we've begun to try to understand the egg and the temperatures at which these proteins begin to unfold and then set back up and he, as you apply heat or as you apply shear, time, temperature, pH changes, all these things affect the way an egg behaves in, a, in its myriad of uh, possibilities. And so, again, you can see some things here. That was just a ravioli 
that we made right there. It's a ravioli of an egg where we uh, wanted to make, a, 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 it's a, it was a riff on a classic Italian dish that where, where scrambled eggs are the filling for a, a ravioli, but I wanted to make the wrapper edible and out of egg, and I wanted the inside to be made out of eggs. And we tried all sorts of things, but once we realized, well, what temperature the egg will set and this and that, we were able to, cr to sculpt a dish using our, our knowledge and our creativity. And then there, you'll see up there some, some beautiful, it almost looks like a bath mat, but it's actually little tiny drops of egg white that we've gotten to stick together in this sheet that almost looks like the surface of the moon or a bath mat, which is not really a, a good, delicious description. And I, <laughs> I apologize, but I don't really know how else to describe it. Um, and then you'll see we, here, we've, we've taken an egg just the yolk, and we've put it in a little sleeve, like, like an ice pop sleeve, and we've cooked it at a very specific temperature for a certain amount of time, and we've created an egg yolk that has the texture of a beautiful, soft cheese. And, and these are just some examples of how we've been able to take our understanding of the egg and our knowledge of how it works and how it behaves at different points with different factors to create some really interesting ideas in the restaurant. But I also think it's a great way of showing theirs. That's deep fried hollandaise. That's a, a, a dish that uh, we get a lot of attention for because we figured out how to, how to deep fry an emulsion of, of egg and butter and how to make it heat stable as it goes into a fryer. Very difficult, lots of things to consider. And again, through research, through, look, through looking backwards, through looking into other things like pastry creams, which are boiled eggs and, and, and hollandaise, we, we were able to figure out how to do things like this. And it's very exciting. But the end result, forget about these cool dishes, the end result is that we now learn more, we understand more, and we've, we're, we're getting better as cooks. And I start off by saying that we don't know much, and I, and, I, and I believe that, that we don't know as much as a lot of other people that do what they do. But I think that things are getting better, things are looking up. And I think that it, it, we know now in the last 15 years more than we knew in the 20,000 years prior to that about cooking. So we're on the way up. That's a good thing. And what I would ask is I would ask you guys to keep pushing us, to keep asking us questions, because soon, more and more and more, we're going to have answers for you. So that's really all I want to say. I want to say thank you very much, and take care.